I've been trying to keep things peachy, just happy, dope content on the channel. We've been doing well, man, 500K like a week ago. What we at now, like 515? But every once in a while I watch a video or I just experience something and I'm like, this still happens. But I date back to like 2K16, 15, 14, 13, where buying VC was like, it just continuously gets more tedious. Now this, no, okay, guys, I'm not gonna rant too much on the channel. I, I know some of y'all like to sit there and enjoy me yelling at some shit. But I don't want to have to do this. Some of this stuff should just be obvious, and I'm sure the devs know this, so it's not like I'm bringing some new info. This is stuff that everybody knows, that everybody acknowledges, and yet still exists. For those who don't know, microtransactions is basically when you use real money to buy virtual money in the game. Now, there's a place for microtransactions in video games. It makes life easier, because I know some of y'all like to sit there and pretend like you want to grind for everything, and there's games where I appreciate that, but people have work, people work at full time, and then you come home, you're not trying to work full time again just to get VC to enjoy a basketball game. And you know what, for specific games, like they rely on microtransactions like Rainbow Six, they run DLC every few months, and it's dope content, it keeps the game moving. And for those games, you sit there and you go, okay, you know what, that's palatable, we can deal with that, I'm willing to pay for this content, because Rainbow Six is a game that lasted, what a drop, in 2015? And each year, it's becoming more and more relevant, more and more people are wanting to play the game. But there's a point you reach where it becomes out of control, where everything becomes pay to play. I've been slowly keeping tabs on the My Team community, which is like, just being gutted, and destroyed from bad pack odds and two incredibly expensive packs. I stopped playing my team last year because of that reason and from what I'm hearing it's gotten even worse this year. On top of the fact that especially early on in the year it takes up until February where they start really adding the best diamond cards etc right because right now they're just giving 86 overall players and people are spending hundreds of dollars on packs to get him. Now if that's what you want to do with your money Go at it. But even when you look on the My Park side, let's do the math real quick. So it takes approximately $50 so you could upgrade one player fully. But one player, like it's a pretty big niche. Like I have a pure sharpshooter, but I also want to get posters and slam on folks. I'm gonna wait, want to make a slasher, right? Two players. But you know what? I feel like I want to have like a playmaking player, but can also shoot like a sharpshooting playmaker. That's three players. But yo, I have too many guards now. Like I want to switch it up. I'm trying to experience everything. That's why I bought the video game. So I also want a big man. I want to go pure rebounder just dominate in the paint that's four players right there so that's approximately for me two hundred dollars i don't know what the rates are in america but i'm pretty sure they're similar now let's say you want to play on the park to get said how much is how much is that 200 kvc for each player right multiply by four that's eight hundred thousand vc all right so let's say you get 250 vc for every park game let me pull out the calculator it'd take you playing 3200 park games to get enough VC. And keep in mind, 250 on the park is pretty good. You have to get a pretty high teammate grade for that to work. So that's assuming every single game you're on point. That's also assuming you win most of these games, if not all, because that win bonus is also gonna translate. Of those 3,200 park games, it's gonna take approximately anywhere from six to 10 minutes to complete a game. So the amount of grind required, you're better off just going to Walmart landing a job, working for a cool 15 hours instead of playing the game for what feels like 200 plus hours just to get enough to get four players so you can fully experience the park. Let alone the boxes you have to buy on my team. The numbers are absurd. This year it's managed to get even more absurd. Who would have thought that's possible? If you told me in 2K18, the microtransaction, wait, you said 2K17 was, 2K18 is gonna be a whole new level of crazy. I would have been like, how did they do that? How would they even get worse than that? But not only at launch did they have high haircut prices, which you couldn't even preview, and some of y'all acting like, Agent, you can't preview them in real life. Bitch, this isn't real life. Stop using real life arguments when we're talking about 2K. In real life, you also can't zigzag like this and bang with a sharpshooter, but you could do it in 2K, right? So stop with that argument. I don't wanna hear real life. But for the first time, in my memory, in 2K history, they reduced the VC price of a product in the game because people were really angry about it. People are like, first of all, if you go to the barbershop in, in the beginning of the game, that's where one of the places where your game would crash and you would lose your player. So one, I didn't enter the barbershop. 
But for the people that did, you couldn't preview the haircuts. On top of that, they costed a lot of money. For example, the Tims in 2K18 cost 9,000 VC. 9,000. Can we do the math on how long it would take to get Tims? It would take me playing 36 full games on the park, doing well on all of them, just to buy a pair of Tims. And probably the most frustrating part for me was at launch, the game was one way. And then the first thing they did before they fixed the East Coast, West Coast issue on Pro-Am, before they fixed the fact that you need to send two squad invites to get into a game, or every time you hop on the stage, you get lagged out. Before they fixed real game-breaking issues, they decided to make it more difficult to get points on playing on these different game modes. I know Pro-Am saw a huge nerf. I know Park also did. And so you, you really just sit back like, that was the number one priority. Now there's two ways to look at this. One way is, they're trying to make the game last long. Like, I don't want the game to die in a month. I'm trying to play this game for a while. I want to enjoy it for a while. At no point should any game mode feel like you have to spend money just to compete. Now, thank God, give credit where it's due. I, they, the attribute boost seen a huge nerf from last year, right? Last year, I was angry that nobody was talking about the fact that you could have plus five to all your attributes and I would never know that guy over there had plus five, right? And I thought that was such a monumental buff that nobody was talking about that we couldn't even see if our opponents had used. This year, like, it's, it's pretty difficult, one. It's not as easy to get skill boosts. You can't just buy it, thank God. So there we go, like, that. thank God, all right? Thank God they didn't go in the direction of park cards. Park cards could have literally been the end of park and playground, whatever you want to call it. By attribute boosts and park cards, they were so close to making playground park literally what happened to my team and turn it into a pay to play. But when we take it to the scale 2K's taking it where every year you're making less VC doing the same things. Isn't that crazy? Like there was one reviewer who gave 2K a three out of 10 and then apparently 2K reached out to him and said, yo, you want to change that? They literally asked him, yo, what's up with the rating? Because, and the reason he gave him a three out of 10 was because he said the microtransaction ruined his experience. So 2K dumbed down the gameplay to appeal to casuals, but casuals are being turned off because it's pay to play. And you would think that with the crazy microtransactions and the amount of money that's being made, you would think for sure we're not gonna have server issues. And for me, it only ever clicks when I hear someone from a different community talk about it. I was uh, Optic Karma. I watch him, bro. He plays professional Call of Duty, man. Shout out to Karma. And once you're in the 2K community for so long, we just get used to the fact that we try and join a game, but it kicks our friend. And we're like, we'll get it next game. This happens. But in other communities, they're looking at us like, yo, what, what's happening, bro? This never happens in my game. Like in Rainbow Six, I got eight characters for $20, yo. $20. And it was over a year's worth of DLC for $20. I got countless hours of enjoyment playing with those new players. I found some new people I love to play with. I, yo, Buck, I love Buck. First of all, he's a Canadian. Something needs to happen. There's no possible way every year it could continue to get more extreme. I get it, all right? I don't, sometimes I feel like we're going too easy on 2K, then I feel like we're going too hard on 2K. But on this issue of microtransactions, there is no reason it should be this much. Have it, have it okay. You know what, sometimes you feel like 2K15, you were pushing it, but it was all right. 2K16, I'm like, are you out of your mind? 2K17, I knew for a fact you were out of your mind. So I don't even know how I could begin to categorize 2K18. $9,000 for a pair of Tims? 9,000 VC. I wouldn't be surprised if next year it was 9,000 real American dollars. 2K for the first time ever saw people angry about something that was so blatantly ridiculous and they reduced the haircut cost. They say it's, it's gonna cost significantly less to get haircuts now. 2K saw all the deleted players and I, a bunch of people who submitted tickets was getting like 200K, a million, two, I saw someone get 4 million VC back for one deleted player. I don't know if that was a bug, a glitch, but people were getting compensated for, for one, they wasted money on their player if they spent VC. Two, the time that they spent. But three, like the, in, the inconvenience that the entire thing caused. So I saw that and I was like, okay, 2K might be onto something. So let me just say this. I'm all right paying microtransactions to upgrade my player. I wanna be the first player to hit 85 so I can grind to 90, 95, 100. Uh, 99, you get what I mean. 
It's 2017, we all recognize that microtransactions exist in every video game. Video games that have no business with loot boxes and pack openings are making them now just so they can benefit off microtransactions. I think it was GTA 4, the first one to really do DLC big, and like a whole wave of companies started to do DLC. And it might have been EA with FIFA and Madden that really popularized uh, microtransactions and buying virtual currency and then now everybody's doing that, but there's limits. All right, 2K, I got a brilliant idea to help you take microtransactions to the next level because me as a consumer, I only ever wanna see you make as much money as possible. At no point am I ever worried that you making money could ruin my experience if you take it too far. I want you to take it as far as possible. So stop tiptoeing lines. You're slowly decreasing the amount we make off the same stuff we've been doing for the last five years. Next year, we need to take things to a brand new level. I'm gonna help you do it. We need to have little kids applying for a line of credit. You don't pay them back in a month, and keep in mind, they could get as much money as they want to buy VC. There is no limit. If they default, then you could take everything they own. You can destroy their credit and ruin their futures. Isn't that a brilliant idea? Not only could you ruin the experience that they have playing the video game, but then you can ruin their lives at the same time. I'm telling you, bro, I'm full of good ideas because we're tiptoeing too much here. Every year, it's slowly getting worse and worse. It's never a huge jump until you look back three or four years. So I'm gonna come out. This is a groundbreaking idea. I know y'all have never heard anything like this before, so let me say it. 2K, reduce the cost of virtual currency, make the game palatable when it comes to microtransactions, and make a good game that everyone's gonna wanna buy, and then people will just end up buying microtransactions if they want to, how does that sound? How about instead of focusing on siphoning everybody, literally everybody, for their money, we just make a really good game that people are gonna enjoy, what polished game with no bugs and glitches. Is, see, they, never, they probably never thought about that. It never occurred to them that that was an alternative. There is so many dev teams like Naughty Dog, they do it right, Ubisoft, has messed up for multiple years, but even there's, if Ubisoft can turn it around 2K, you can too. That's what I've learned as a consumer, that if Ubisoft can do it, 2K, you can do it too. Ubisoft dug themselves out of a monumental hole. They weren't they rated like the worst company in the United States or something like that? Or was that EA? I was, I was a lot of oh, like fishy video game kind of If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. I'm not doing too many rants. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace.